What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Got John Majak here, CEO, founder, Mr. Pipeline, Google guru, uh, author of Ring the Bell. Um, really just all around great guy. I've known you for years. We touched base a little a little while ago. It's been about, it's been about five years since we kind of collaborated and connected. And just I've been, I've been following you. i um, big fan of who you are as a person and business owner. And you've been doing a lot of cool things. You got the podcast out you know, wrote a book, really, it sounds like you're at a position in your business journey where you're, at, you're able to see things from the top down, man. And, and it's such a beautiful part of business because you can be creative and I just see you flourishing that. So that was one of the things that inspired me to bring you on. So welcome, my friend. I want you to start off by just giving us who you are, man, and what you're about. Dude, that's an incredible intro. Thank you for that. It's, uh, of course. it's, it's an honor to be here, Tanner. You and I, it's like a uh, fun fact, you and I were we we talked and chopped it up five six years ago when when drip wasn't even a business right it like it, you, you were just <laughs> like uh, at the end of the day you were a, a young hustler i was a young hustler and i said yep. you know what dude i see you man you know yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go likewise yeah you know for two, sure two eagles eagles passing up top right that's it just trying to make <laughs> trying to make their noise before their time on this rock is over dude so that's right man much respect man it's it's cool to be here full circle you know i've been rooting for you behind the scenes for a long time so i know thank you no doubt so my name uh my name is john majak i've been an entrepreneur my entire life it's i always tell people the same stuff but i've written my own paycheck for like 25, 26 years, something like Love that. It. So yeah, I know the struggle. I know the game of business very well. Um, unfortunately, I'm an expert. And fortunately, I'm an expert in a lot of ways. Um, but I come from the school of hard knocks. Like I was, nobody ever taught me anything. I failed more times than I succeeded. Um, and I built and sold. My journey started in the, in the exterior cleaning business. So built and sold well tanner my first business is called john's perfect pressure okay <laughs> full-blown like 15 year old just trying to knock on doors and make shit happen yeah yeah, that, yeah, yeah. i so i i had a toyota avalon i was pulling with my with uh with my trailer back there and wow you know the game <laughs> and after <laughs> that i ended up um <laughs> after i failed and i figured some things out and i realized i didn't want to be attached to the business name i learned yeah. and i studied and i started to figure out figuring out some people like just to kind of stand on the backs of giants to see further. I ended up building um, a business called power clean and we built it up to seven figures, put SOPs in place, ops, manuals, documentation, just like you name it. We buttoned it up, built it up, sold it. And then uh, Mr. Pipeline just was started by pure accident, dude. Wow. It's yeah. So crazy story is I sold the business and I, 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 we struggled for a long time and eventually like we got things right because we were doing Google ads. We were doing SEO. We were figuring out how to dominate online. And then we got so many damn leads that I would sell leads to other people and overflow business because we couldn't handle it all. So when I sold my business, I went to the pool store, the guy I bought from chlorine from, and he's like, dude, now that you sold the business, what are you going to do? I'm like, no idea. He's like, why don't you help me market my business? I'm like, all right. So I, I tried it and it stuck and he did really well. And then the painter that I flipped leads to said, how can you help me? Hmm. Before you know it, man, I'm marketing for a painter, a pool guy. And then dude, just started taking off from there. Sure. And sure. here we are 12 years in dude and marketing five, north of 500 clients. And wow, it's an honor. Bro. That's amazing. Crazy. 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 Wow. Yeah. And you're passionate about it. It's my, my, I was put on this earth to help people, right? Like that. that's yeah. my shit. Like I love, yeah. I care about people. You know that, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know that that's a perfect example. When we met yeah. and we, we connected, I'm like, let's go, bro. Like yeah. we're all spiritual beings living a human experience and nobody's better than anybody. We're all just my favorite people in life are the ones who like lift others and yeah. see others. And like, that's my, my sure. people, my mission. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Wow. And that's, I didn't know that. And it's awesome. And I, it shines through your leadership. I think one thing that stands out about me is the culture you create there. You have some A players that have been with you since I've known you. <laughs> um, tell me what right. you've learned in terms of leadership that can translate to painting business owners and small businesses that 
you know, some principles that you align with in terms of leadership and keeping people motivated to want to be a part of what you got going on. Like McGinn is he, I mean, he's been with you for, you know, for a while. I mean, he's your, yeah, he's like your seven right years. Man. Yeah, probably. dude. And they yeah. represent you so well. Like, thanks bro. How do you achieve that? I, um, uh, my biggest thing was like taking full ownership of everything. So I, I lead by full accountability. When I, when I mess up, like I let people know publicly in my company, you know, I could have done this better or I'm going to try this thing. Guys root for me. If it doesn't work, at least, you know, I had the courage to go get it. And like people, I take people with me on the journey, trying to create that experience with my team. And I always tell people like, it's okay to fail, like be good at failing. Like I failed so many times and that's why success came in my life. Not because I just woke up and wished for it. I like worked, I failed a lot and then things started happening. So like in any company I'm involved in, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm like, be imperfect, be okay with that, right? Sometimes you'll get it right, sometimes you won't. So I try to lead with like that, just being real and telling my team to take risks. Like I hired you and I wanna get out of your way. Like you're an A player, I'm gonna sit here and boss you around, I'm the wrong guy. For me, it's like, you're a smart person. I'm blessed that our journey's crossed. Let me give you a fair shot sure. and let's go. Sure. And I try to get out of their way. Let me ask you this though. You've been self-employed for a long time. Sometimes I draw on my experiences of being employed and I recognize what I don't want and don't like. And that's helped me become what I believe to be a, a servant leader because I felt the feeling of being oppressed, yeah. suppressed, Right. Depressed. Right. Um, yeah. Right. So, Dude, so how so do you use, so do you use like, what are your devices to use seeing as though that you've just been employed for so long? Does it draw from previous mistakes of how you've handled employees and it didn't work out well? Or do you have experiences where you were an employee and you just felt the feelings of someone not being led by a servant type leader? Yeah. So my whole secret to the game was like, I'm not, I'll put my, I'll do everything I can to make sure you're successful. Some of us are like leaders by nature. Some of us are like born leaders. And like, for me, it's, I feel like God entrusted me with this responsibility to help others and to lead and to be the CEO. So I got to get out of people's way, lead them to the promised land and hold people accountable too. Cause it's tough. This game is not easy. So I, I try to hold people accountable along their journey too. Cause a lot of people veer off. And for me, it's like, what can I do to keep you in line all while following the core mission, the values, the vision, and making sure we're all happy at the end of the day? Sure. Yeah. When it comes to your deliverables, kind of like a painting business owner, and I just had a great conversation with a few friends about this, but you know, we have the responsibility to our customers to meet or exceed the standard. Right. And then as the CEO, our job is to make sure our people are meeting or exceeding the standard that they have to us. Cause that, you know, so how do you balance the two? I mean, yeah. how involved are you in, in balancing the two and how, how did, how did you make the transition to managing managers, which yeah. is also a big transition that kind of, you know, even though, and, and I'll kind of piggyback on that. You're the owner. I'm the owner. No one's going to care about our business more than us, but how do we get people bought in? Right. To care about the business, at least to 90 to 95 percent. Right. Without the benefits of ownership. Right. It's a great question, dude. For me, it's building a culture where people feel valued, where they feel listened to, where they know that they're part of like a really big mission. And it's like one of the things that I've learned in my life is when you embed giving back and service into your business, and you stop focusing so much on, p on profit and bottom line, and you start to like really show up in your community or show up for your team, or like you're just doing things that are bigger than just operating for profit, people buy in quick. So let me give you an example of something that like was one of the greatest aha moments I've ever had in business. So I talk about it a little bit in my book, but there was a moment, dude, where I always tell people, whether I coach or I, or I mentor or whatever, I always share this story because it hits home. Automating a business is amazing. Like it's what it's all about. Build something special so you don't be, you're not a slave to it forever. 
But when my, somebody in my family got sick, right? Like my wife got sick behind closed doors. I had to step away from my business for over a year. Yeah. And that's how ring the bell even happened. Like I wrote every night because I still like to work and something, all these like notes turned into a story and it's wild, dude. But like, I'll never forget that moment of having to be at all these doctor's appointments at take care of my son, like play mom and dad. I had to make sure all the bills were paid. I had to do all this stuff, dude. And I remember thinking there was just like this moment, bro, where I was like, I can't believe I'm getting all these reports from my team saying we're having record breaking months. If you need anything, let us know. Um, here's a good, here's a new th- client testimonial. Like all this shit started coming together. And I was like, dude, I said, I looked at my wife and I go, God is so good, man. I said, God is so good. I said, here I did, here I am building this business where I preached culture and I, and I embedded giving back and I, I did all this stuff, but then I had to step away and my company took on a life of its own and they started doing all of those things without me, man. And like, so good, man, so good, dude, that's the secret to this game is like, you can't fake culture. You need to practice what you preach. You need to really check in on people. You need to make, like, don't just say you have, you care, like literally care. Your comp, your team members' lives matter just as much as yours. Work anniversaries, birthdays, a new child, a death in the family, like a dog dot, like show up, show up, show up, show up, like, and really mean it. And before you know it, you, there might be a time where you need your team to show up for you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what so happened to me, dude. Owen so sees, man. Bro, that's so what happened see, without the expectation of a return, it sounds like. Yes. And then when it was like, hey, man, I'm getting hit. Everybody right. went to bat for you, dude. Wow. They just kept going, dude. They yeah. kept going. Yeah. And they took that, that giving initiative that I put in my company and they're like, hey, look, we're still keeping everything going. And I'm like, dude, what a blessing. So yeah, I amazing. always tell people, if you want to build a world-class culture, remember, everything lives and dies at the feet of the CEO. Sure. Everything. So make sure like it's something special. You fight for your team. They're your greatest asset. You put core values, right? But you actually live the core values. Like ours are fearless across the wall, like family, excellence at every level, authentic, and the whole acronym. And then is like, it's painted in our wall. It says, be fearless. So we live it. Every time somebody's in a tough situation, I always say, what are our core values? Like go back to that. And let's start, let's let you make that decision yeah. and let's let the core values be the compass. How refreshing is that for people that come in from a toxic environment, dude? Don't you ever feel that? Like, like it's almost like they're a, they're a domestic violence victim coming in and it's like, wait, you're like, wait, I can go home today. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, right. I know you've been there. Like, right. how, how does that feel for you? It's, uh, it's really rewarding, man. It's rewarding to know my biggest blessing in the business is so somebody the other day looked at me and said, one of my HR director in my business said, what's your favorite part of the book? And I said, it's hard to say, but like, there's some things in chapter one, two, and three that are my favorite. Um, and I'll tell, send, send her some, some lines so she can read it. And she's like, my favorite line, I wish I had it in front of me, bro, but she's like, my favorite line is like, my favorite part of business is the fact that God entrusted us for other people's lives, mm. right? Like you're, we're, we're responsible. Everybody who's listening to this, people who are running companies, like you are responsible for other people's like f- future, what they, mm. the food on their table, possibly college funds, retirement, like thinking about that stuff. That's heavy, dude. And a lot of people don't think like that, but it's the reality. So for me, it's like, wow. When somebody comes in, I know what I signed up for and I'm not going to let them down. I will, I will go until I can't see before I let a good person down. Sure. Sure. Amazing. And you know, one of the, one of the mottos that I like to preach to my audience and people that I help and just something that I look at in my business is I want to create such an opportunity that when someone gets a job to work for my company, that they celebrate that achievement with their family in whatever capacity that is. Maybe they go out to eat or maybe they send that text message with like all the exclamation points. 
that makes them feel like they're progressing in some way and yeah. it gives them hope and it, and it maybe you'll like this one. Maybe it's an answered prayer. <laughs> maybe it's that prayer that like they've been striving toward. And I believe that I'm on this earth to serve God's people and God needs us in a way to help fulfill the promises of hard work, consistency, doing the right things. And I want to create an environment that celebrates that. And I think you do too. Um, and there's, uh, for those that maybe this is going over their head, it's just like, man, like when you get to a certain point, man, you really start to look for ways to be a blessing to your team, <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> like, Isn't that the I truth? Look, I'm looking for them, dude. Yeah. Like, and it's almost like I, I jump at the opportunity to find a way to show up. And I yeah. think, you know, that's why you and I get along. I think after what you're telling me, I mean, dude, I love it. I love this. And to be able to keep the standards so high. Let me ask you this on the flip side, though. Have you run into people that don't appreciate that and don't buy into that and take advantage of that? Yeah, absolutely. And I've created something called our anti-values. And <laughs> I love yeah, that. there you go. That's perfect. Right. <laughs> so the name of the game, the name of the game is to build a, a system dependent business, not a people dependent sure. business. So if you're listening and you're struggling with Paul and he's a horrible tech or he's a great tech, but he's always late and things aren't working out. Like you put a system in place where it's like three strikes, it's a written, it's a verbal, it's a what, and they walk themselves out. You don't beat yourself up because yeah. you have a hiring system in the back end where that's mm. capturing great candidates and, a, and an ad on Facebook that's five bucks a day, flywheeling in new candidates all wow. day long, right? With the careers page, with all your team having a fun time top golf drink having some drinks like just celebrating over the holidays like that's the name of the game so like building in a system dependent business that flywheels in people all the time keeps people on their toes and when some of those people come in and like let's just say they don't fit our core values we have something called our anti values and our our core values are fearless so naturally i went too scared as our anti-values. And it's like selfish. Um, it's, I, I forget exactly what they're off the top, but my selfish, biggest, biggest one was like entitled, right? Oh, entitlement. Yeah. Dude. So anybody who's listening, I hope you take this action item away. Get some core values embedded in your business, things that you stand for. They start with the values that matter to you as a business owner. Create anti-values. Now, the most beautiful thing is you can put them to work. So like, let's just say you're interviewing somebody. You're like, you know what? This person is right on point. Run it against your core values. Do they fit everything that you just stand for? Are they, mm. Do they care? Are they, do they, are they authentic or whatever that is? But at the same time, if something's off on that person, right? They seem like they're just, you're the best tech or the best painter that's ever existed right? Like they've worked for the biggest and the baddest companies. Start to understand if there's like an entitled component, start to understand your anti-values, what you don't want in the company. And I anticipate Run it against that, that, you, and that system kicks them out. I anticipate that you use that as part of your hiring structure to identify when you have those anti-values. I think we all have anti-values. I think you need to place value behind creating these values because those are your North star, right? Those are what you're those keep things into alignment. So I love that. I want to no talk about ring the bell. I want to talk about the name of the book. What was the thought process behind it? I'll give you my definition. When I hear ring the bell, it's like, I don't know if you, the whole nine yards, man, did you ever hear that? Um, did you ever hear that uh, story behind what the whole nine yards meant? Give it to me. So, so apparently there's these fighter pilots back in, in you know, in wartime. And whenever like there was chaos happening, you know, you'd hear, the pilot, you know, yelling to the gunner, give him the whole nine yards, dude. And that was the nine yard clip. Mm. Um, and really what that means is like empty the bucket, you know, mm. empty all in, you know. So when I hear ring the bell, man, I think my, my mind's taking me, you're climbing the mountain and things are tough, but you're not going to stop until you ring that thing. Is that in alignment with what the mission of your book is? Yeah, you're right on the money, bro. I, uh, I wrote the, the, say it again. I love the name. Thanks, dude. Thanks. I, uh, 
it hit me when I, and I go back to that moment where I wrote the book, because just like Mr. Pipeline, I believe that think the greatest things in life come to you when you really weren't planning for it. Yeah. When it's like when you and I met and you were launching different businesses and stuff like drip jobs came out of like a blessing, right? You took all your experience, leveraged it and scaled it. Sure. It's like, you're a blessing to others for having that. And I'll never forget being home and writing this book, putting all these notes together. I'm like, I think I'm, I thought I was journaling out the pain yet. Somehow it's like, I'm writing a story. And then before you know it, I'm like sewing it all up. I'm like, this is like a book. And yeah, yeah <laughs> crazy accidental dude. book that just happened. Right. It just kind of <laughs> happened. It started yeah, coming yeah, together. Yeah. And then I, the crazy part about it is I think the, the, the greatest part takeaway for me was how can I add as much value to people? Once this start, thing started getting firmed up, I'm like, how can I really serve? But one of the things I've, I've struggled a lot in my life, but like when I started breaking through and I started making money and not struggling financially anymore, I started to realize I had a skill set for helping people generate money. So I would coach and people would, I would give them tools and they'd come back, coach, we're killing it. Thank you so much. Or like I started having this like really, I started to see where people were really hurting, fill that gap and they would be, they, the hurt would be gone. Mm. And then same thing with marketing. They couldn't grow their marketing. I figured out right. what would work for different businesses that grew. So I had this idea of helping people make as much money as possible. And I think it's always been a strength. But the aha moment came when I realized that the secret to this entire game of life and business is service, is, is truly contributing to, to others' lives and your community and God's children. And then I'm like, wait a minute. And it was like a light bulb went off, Tanner. I th remember thinking to myself, is the real purpose of business to be God's hands and feet on the ground and help people really, really in every single way that you can? And then before you know it, good. I started writing this narrative. Of the chapter one is like the narrow road where you get most people get chewed up and spit out. You know it. I know it. Anybody who's walked really? that road. Oh, yeah. Dark, bro. Yeah, it's I scary. quit my bank job. Right. Start my painting business. That's right. The road right there, bro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I got like no, no one else is here. It's dark. Yep. You yeah, know, <laughs> creatures, overgrown yeah, right. brush. Like it's going to yeah. get you. Yeah. And it's crazy. I talk about that. That's where you create your business name. That's where you try to figure out if you can really make it. All that self doubt, all the family members that secretly don't want you to really win. And it's like all that shit comes in and then all of a sudden you make it through and it's, you're now gazing to the bottom, gazing from the bottom to the top of the mountain. And like, I started writing this narrative, dude. And like, I started to understand the secret for me. How did I make it? Well, I charged past all the adversities and I got to the top. When you, and I've started to realize if you smash that bell as loud as you can, mm. everybody down below will hear you right? You're marketing like a monster. Everybody in your town will hear and see you in every single way. But at that same time, if you're smashing that bell so hard, if you do it with intention, your, your team lives in that community, right? right. Your, your, your workers, your, your, the community, the, the churches, the temples, the, the, the adoption places, like they're there too. So if you smash that thing hard enough, they hear you. Mm. You're showing up for them too. Yeah. So it's like this whole thing came up of this guy who took Love his that. his journey of adversity to the top, hit it as loud as he can, and started doing making as much money and impact as possible. I love that. Yeah. Love man. That. Build it and they will come. That's what's coming to my mind right now. It's like yes, build, sir. build yes. your faith. And that narrow road is important, man, because you know, that's the, we, that's the, that's the boot camp, man. That's, 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 that's just to, that's the qualification process. And what's interesting, and you might've went through this for me, I had to go through it with premium painting and I had to go through it in a big way with drip jobs because the bigger, the impact, the, the greater, the, the, that narrow road, is, the farther the freaking narrow road is. Right. That's a great like, point. It, it, it is. I mean, yeah. the, the, you know, some of the things that I went through just getting drip jobs going would, mm -hmm. would designed to see if I could handle the pressure of when it actually got going 
you know, and now that it's going, the impact, it, it's the, the momentum still, you know, and I, I love that story, man. It's great. amazing, bro. Yeah. I love how you added to it your own touch of how, how deep is the narrow road. Cause you're so right. Some of these easy, like low barriers to entry businesses, the narrow road's not as deep as something like yeah. a software company. No, no. Right? I mean, and what you gave up to do it. I mean, what you're giving up, everything, you're giving up something. You know, I remember how comfortable it was to work a nine to five at a bank and very minimal impact in comparison. But, you know, making that leap was just a, a call to God. I had someone come in and they gave me this like calendar. And on the back, it said, it's not so much, um, you know, what it's not so much the circumstance, it's who's in control of the circumstance. It was weird. He just popped in and gave that to me. And I've been debating putting in my two weeks and I read that and I'm like, man, that's a sign from God. That's it. Wow. You know, um, man, it's special, beautiful. bro. Business is, I feel like, the greatest spiritual journey anyone can embark on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is. It tests your character inside and out. You constantly have a spotlight on you. It tests your integrity inside and out. You know, if a customer overpays you 250 bucks, you're faced with a choice. You know, just something as small as that. Or if your guys, you know, weren't tracking their hours the right way, you're faced with a choice. You know, like these miniature things that chip away at every inch of you as a, as a human to be able to, to be responsible for other people's lives is it's a great honor. Like you said, you have the experience, both sides, it could, it could really tear you apart. What, what's next for you, man? I mean, you've, you've built something really great with Mr. Pipeline. You, Thanks, bro. you have this book. I mean, how do you, how do you, what's the next thing for, for you? I mean, is it greater impact? Is it scaling? Is it, you know, are you going to start another business? What are you doing? It's a great question, man. So I think at this stage, I've um, Mr. Pipeline's automated. By the grace of God, it's automated. It's got people that are running the company. They're killing it. We're having rec. We just had a record breaking month last month. Like we keep growing like wildfire. And yeah, I think one of the greatest reasons is because I I stepped out and I put again smarter people to sure. run the machine and add their values and their spin to the game. So it's like. Yeah. They're March. They're, that that company's on fire. Wow. So, what I've done is over the last, I don't know, maybe year or so, as I started to kind of fall back, and you know, I'm still involved in a, in a lot of ways, strategic leadership, sure. anything yeah. I can do to help guide the mission, I'm there. But behind closed doors, like a lot of I, I we own a mastermind, like the largest mastermind in the gutter community. Um, so uh, we're putting it, on uh, the gutter gutter growth yep gutter growth with tim right yep awesome yep. guy man yeah yeah he's I, a good dude yeah he really he is. was like he was a client of mr pipeline 10 11 years ago wow yeah, yeah. he's super yeah. motivated and it sounds like you guys are making a splash dude that's all awesome. thanks I bro know, i didn't Appreciate know that you were that. part of it i thought it yeah was cool. so i actually started the whole thing and then forced him to do it because i'm like <laughs> dude i got i you are a special dude and i yeah. have to help you step into your beauty your sure. glory because yeah, he loves it though now you could tell it's like, his thing it's, yeah it's great no doubt so i i we got that it's it's on fire he's uh he's him and a couple of guys are leading that pack and there's a bunch of stuff we're throwing a summit i got a private little like private equity game where i'm cool. investing into a lot of businesses and got a windows and doors company and sure. just all sorts of stuff that i'm doing now that i'm putting the right operators in place i can add my expertise and just do the best i can to follow my passion. Cause I feel like my whole life, people always said, what's your passion? Like I love sports. I love different things, but I love the sport of business. Like I love this game. That's what I was going to ask you, man. Do you still love yeah. the game? Yeah, you know, I do. The game. I do. You gotta love the game. It's, it's the best gotta, game. Yeah, it is. The highs and and the lows. <laughs> bro, you get one time on this spinning rock, just one. Yeah. Like all the way, send it right. The whole send entire it. thing, ring that yeah. bell, the whole nine, right? right. Is that what it is? The whole nine yards. The whole nine yards, bro. Before your time is up. So I'm doing that with business. Love that. Love Thanks. that. Man, this was great. I knew this would happen. I knew it. I'm, I'm excited. Like, We've got to connect. Um, guys, check out John. Uh, if you're looking for SEO, are you guys doing Facebook ads yet? We're doing Facebook ads now. Yep. Okay. So Facebook ads, SEO, Google. I know you guys built a website. You guys built yep. great websites. Thanks. Um, I don't think you, they need to be a marketing client to get a website, right? Nah, nah. Our okay. strength is in home service. But if sure. anybody needs anything, just holler. Yeah, yeah. So if you need a website, Mr. Pipeline. Um, and then, of course, ring the bell. Grab the book. I know that you just released the audio book. Yeah. How was just that? Just released. Is that fun? Pain painful. painful. 
the imagine. one of the I tell people I all the time, dude. I tell people all the time. I've done a lot of things in my life. There's nothing like like being drenched in a booth, trying wow. to do this voice and this story and and keep dude, keep and, the energy right, keep the emphasis, dude. It's like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, but you got it yeah. done. Yeah, you rang the bell on that. That's yeah, sure did <laughs> the whole nine, baby. Cool, yeah, cool. So we got ring the bell on Amazon. Probably audio. Is it on audiobooks yet? Yep. Or yep. Audible? Mm-hmm. Right on, man. Congratulations yeah. on all your success, John. You're an inspiration to me. Um, so thanks for coming on this podcast and. I hope you continue to bless others. And I know those of you that are listening that, you know, when you hear John, you align with his mission, his vision, um, get his book, give him some feedback, leave a great review on it. You know, it helps his mission, helps him expand his, his, you know, his reach. So thanks, man. Much love, dude. Been an honor. Yeah.